Hey folks, Clyde Lindsay here at Leechburg Lights. Hey, I want to do a video today. I want to try and keep this short and sweet. And this is kind of a video, uh, not a how-to, but an all about or an, an uh, getting up to date with what a data layer is and how to use it inside your sequences. So let's open up uh, one of my sequences that I brought in last year that uh, we'll find Frosty here. Uh, Frosty, uh, last year I brought him in as a data layer. Uh, I'm going to discard this changes in this sequence. And it's going to load up this sequence. Now, um, I created this sequence, I want to say, probably back in 2000, uh, <laughs> 2011, 2010, somewhere around there. And uh, it's been a wonderful sequence. And I hated to lose all of the data that I've, I've built and, and drawn into it or built into it all these years. So I used the data layer to bring in everything that I really liked. Now the challenge is, is uh, using data layers, like I said, I'm not going to show a how-to on data layers. I'll leave that up to Andy Harrison, Sean Meehan, and John Storms, and, and a, a significant number of other people who have done how-to step-by-step videos on data layer imports. Um, they are truly the masters at doing that. Um, I, I only brought in by a data layer what I needed to bring in, and the rest I used what I like to call the channel mapping, uh, and I have videos on how to do that as well. The initial import of the data takes you know roughly around two or three minutes, depending on how big your LOR sequence is. But um, but the overall impression is is that the reason you're using a data layer is because your sequencing is done. You don't want to add, you don't want to change any of the existing sequencing, and you just want to begin adding new props to it in pixels. So. Uh, what I like about the import, the data layer import, specifically with this song, with Frosty, is I had some wonderful, wonderful uh, sequencing, uh, uh, roofline sequencing that I loved. And let's see if I can find it. Here's my, um, here, here is my uh, original sequence from LOR, and I did use some Nutcracker effects. And here, Happy here you can see it. I love that, and I could never recreate it. I don't know how I did it in X Lights, but I I had it in LOR and it's saved, and I used the data layer to actually bring that back. Um, I figured there's no reason to recreate that 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 twinkle and chasing effect. Uh, so there's no reason to redo it whenever I can just leave it in there as the data layer. However, there's a number of other things that were going on in my sequence that I didn't like. Uh, for example, I had upgraded my mega tree. It used to be a thousand pixels and now it's 1600 pixels. Well, I learned that the sequencing, uh, there was nothing I could do in the data layer to, um, uh, to upgrade the sequencing unless I did the sequencing in X lights. So I did bring the data in, but I just covered over it in the specific areas that I had already sequenced. Um, and that's what's nice about the data layer. Uh, the data layer allows you, and you can see this here, this is the off effect. Um, if I bring down the effects setting, the off effect is used for whenever, uh, perfect example is whenever you have a data layer that you brought in and you don't want to show uh, parts of that data, you just want to hide it because you want to resequence it. You can see here, for example, here's my arches jumping back and forth. Well, if I delete this, and let's go ahead and re-render. See what my arches used to do? And now they're, they're like weird, they're different. But I like the other way. I, I like the chase that I created. It fit a little better. So I can hit Control Z, re-render that one effect, and I go back to it. Um, so that data layer is actually there. Let's go ahead and open that up and have a look at that. So you can tell, like I said earlier, if I zoom in, you can tell here is some data from uh, from the original sequence uh, that right there, you can see that original data that's sitting there that I liked and I wanted to keep. Now, um, I don't want to get rid of it. It's good data and it looks good in the sequence. I like it. But whenever we get to a different part of the song, it transitions into a different feel. So I wanted to change the sequencing to reflect that. And that's what I did. I didn't erase the data. The data is still un, uh, still here, but it's up underneath of the new sequencing that's on top of it. So what I want you to think about whenever you're dealing with the data layer is the data layer is actually like the finite 
uh, solid rock foundation of the sequence. It's always there. It's underneath everything. You can always trace over top of it and change the outer coating. But if you ever get rid of it, if you delete that top coating, you will always go back to your base, your solid, your 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 original picture, and the sequencing cannot be deleted. You cannot delete anything in this uh, in this XML file and where it'll affect the uh, the data layer. So with that, let's go uh, let's go look at a couple things in the directory that might be interesting. Something for uh, for those of you who want to know. You have to understand that your XML file is the file that is your actual sequencing data. So anywhere you have in your sequence data uh, uh, a sequence uh, or an effect that is saved in your .xml file. Now, when you create a data layer, your data layer comes in and is saved by this file right here this is called the F or um, I'm sorry this file <laughs> it's it's saved in your ISEQ file and it's saved in the same file name as your original sequence is so now you have an uh, an XML file and an ISEQ file this ISC ISEQ file is your background file it's solid as a rock it can't be changed you cannot do anything in the uh, sequencer tab to delete any of this data when you are done bringing in your data and you find that you don't like some parts of the sequencing you can always cover it up what happens is the FSEQ file is what's used to create your playlist and schedule uh, and schedule your show what the schedule the show scheduler does and as well as the Falcon Pi player is it reads the FSEQ file which is created and derived from your ISEQ and your XML file and it creates the FSEQ which reads oh hey I have a sequence it's made up of the ISEQ file and it's made up also of the uh, XML so what it does is this combines the two data files together the XML and the ISEQ and creates a file for the sequence to be read from so that that's the basics here's this is the bare bones understanding of how the files in your file system work if you're going to share a sequence with somebody and it has a data layer attached to it you need to make sure you, well you don't need to um, you part of part of the sequencing will be lost if you don't share that uh, ISEQ file but the FSEQ file is only used only used for your uh, schedule tab or in the uh, Falcon Pi player. So with that in mind, um, another thing that I want to teach you is I want to show you that any sequence that you have a data layer for can be uh, converted automatically into an actual effect. And we do this by going to the node layer. Anywhere there's sequencing written that you can see here, you can right click and you can convert to effect. So let's say you really like this part, this effect here. You could actually create, uh, copy this, and now move this to, let's say, another prop. Let's say I have the Eiffel Tower. Let's say I want to paste it to the Eiffel Tower. So now, if I'm playing this on the Eiffel Tower, you can see that that effect has been successfully uh, jumped over onto the Eiffel Tower. Um, I know it's kind of weird, but that's uh, that's just one uh, one option that you have. Now you can never delete a data layer. You can delete effects in the XML. Uh, this is, I mean, in essence, X X Lights is, the sequencer is an XML editor. It can edit the XML and it just saves this, the uh, effects that we uh, the start and end of all the effects that we give it. But you can never delete you can never get rid of that data layer that you'll find here. You'll never get rid of it unless you delete the ISEQ file that you find here. Um, my high suggestions are when you are done with your editing for your sequence in Lightorama, make sure you change all of your changes that you want before you bring it into your uh, uh, XLite sequence. If you're going to um, uh, make any changes to this data layer you need to do it originally in the X lights sequence you can always delete the data layer go back and change the sequence and then re input it into your sequence that's not gonna hurt anything but uh, just know that if you don't like something here there's only one way to deal with it and that is to either cover it up let it work cover it up or 
replace it with new sequencing like I've done here. Hope so that answers your questions with some data layers, specifically with manipulating, changing them. Obviously, you can't delete them, uh, but you can always manipulate them, cover them up, or resequence over top of them to create the effects that you really want to create. So, guys, thanks for watching. Take care, and all the best to you this season. Have a good one.